Pendaria had a massive Shah infestation, the Horde and the Alliance had a massive war there, Garrosh stole the heart of an ancient old god Yasharaj, while the Mughal were trying to revive their leader and restore his tyranny. And entire zone was destroyed, all of the zones were damaged, all in the span of a single year. However, now, 10 years have passed, we returned on two occasions, Legion and Old Gods attacked, we know the Peak of Serenity is destroyed, the Serpent's Wall was damaged, and the Mantid are active against amongst many things. With the recent Old God Hensi Dragon fight and the potential of Yasharaj returning, it is likely that a big shadow looms over Pandaria still. So what is the continent like today, what has changed, what remained the same, and what is Pandaria today? So we have good and bad news. The bad news is that there isn't a book like Exploring Azeroth, Pandaria or anything of the sort that gives us a really concise and updated view with a lot of official information. The good news, however, is that we have gathered a bunch of info and hints over the years as Myths of Pandaria happened over 10 years ago and there have been hints just all over the place, from us returning to Pandaria on two separate occasions to short stories, mentions by NPCs and also all the recent direct involvements. Now most importantly, let us look at the timeline as in how long has actually passed since Archipane and Myths of Pandaria and the actual in-game lore as it is almost exactly the same as the actual real world time, at least now with the recently introduced Dragonflight time skip, we got a 5 year fast forward since the Shadowlands and right now we are in the year 40 in World of Warcraft, Mists of Pandaria happened in year 30 and the ending of Mists of Pandaria, the trial of Garrosh happened in year 31. So let's just say 10 plus years, 10 years have passed since the mist disappeared and the lands were opened and almost 10 years since that entire storyline ended. Naturally the obvious conclusion is that the conflict ended and that Pandaria as a continent is a much more peaceful place and a much more friendlier place than it was when we had visited it during the expansion. This isn't even just my own speculation, we have actual confirmations of this from multiple sources. For example, the Shah were said to be almost completely gone, although that ended up not being true, they're still slightly pleasant but really no longer a threat, to take away just like residue like remnants of the Shah. Most importantly, the Horde and the Alliance are no longer fighting there, well anywhere really at this point, but Pedaria is no longer a massive Horde Alliance battleground, which just by itself is a huge difference for the continent. We don't have official confirmations on this, but much like Northern that mainly has a skeleton crew or Outland, I would wager the scenario is the exact same in Pedaria. The bases of operations remained in Pedaria of both the Alliance and the Horde, but I'd say they were majorly downscaled. Keep in mind, when we went to invade Pandaria, both factions sent their best units, their entire military, ships, machinery, planes and pretty much everything we had at our disposal. Right now, those bases remain, but I'd say mainly just as outposts as we have bigger things to deal with right now, why would we keep the military in Pandaria? Now in regards to the most important race, the actual Pandaren, the main guys on a continent called Pandaria, I'd say they're living a peaceful life, at least more peaceful than when we were there. It's very important to keep in mind that a bunch of Pandaren are actually independent and while there are factions that join both the Horde and the Alliance, a lot of them just don't really care about all this stuff. Long ago, all the Pandaren were ruled by the Emperor under the Pandaren Empire, but then that rule shifted to local level and then we had some of the Pandaren joining our factions, but the majority of those, especially those not living on islands but on the continent itself, are just not involved in all this politics, all this stuff whatsoever, they're just living their lives. Naturally with peace, Pandaria has been confirmed to be more prosperous, we know traders go there and there are very likely researchers and just all types of cultural exchanges. For example, we have learned that in BFA, Icelandic Pandaren tribes visit Pandaria and purchase supplies there, we can see in Hosen and the Genius merchants across the various regions. This also brings us to two very important races that joined both the Alliance and the Horde back in MOP and that are still a part of it. Unfortunately, there isn't all that much actual info about them, we know they're no longer in a massive conflict and that a lot of them are independent, but those that joined us have actually supported us on various occasions. We can see both the Genu and the Hosen supporting the faction conflict in BFA, so despite not being playable or allied races, at least a portion of them remained loyal to the Alliance and the Horde. Now in terms of who are currently the big guys in Pandaria, there really aren't any rulers. The Horde and the Alliance presence isn't as dominant, so right now the Shadow Pan are really the most powerful force with a lot of political power. and. Of of course the August Celestials are still very influential, but as far as we know in terms of actually ruling, a lot of it is still on the local level.
So while Pandaria no longer has rulers since Emperor Xiao Hao, you can start ruling right now from your phone with Clash Royale, this video sponsor, and possibly one of the most entertaining ways to pass your time, which of course you can get with my link below or the QR code right on the screen. Not many of you actually know, but I've actually been playing Clash of Clans pretty much since the game was released, and I've only recently gotten into Clash Royale, and I was just blown away how ridiculously simple this game is, yet it is just so addicting and entertaining. Generally, with mobile games, you need at least a few hours to grasp everything, but here I was literally just intuitively feigning attacks with giants while sending up Pekka to destroy the other tower. The premise of the game is very simple. It's a multiplayer PvP mode, you have three towers, and you want to destroy the enemy towers before he destroys yours so super simple but nonetheless there is so much strategy involved in that task that if you get too offensive for example your defenses are going to suffer but if you get too defensive you're really not going to get anywhere you can collect and upgrade cards featuring units spells defenses and then you can combine them to figure out the perfect strategy best of all of course you can join clans there are multiple game modes you can play 2v2 and it can get pretty competitive don't get fooled by the simplicity and the straightforwardness of clash royale it can be pretty hard once you get advanced however it is literally a perfect game to get some pvp vibe going while not taking much of your time and the games only really last a few minutes so it's never been a better time to stop make sure to click my link below or just scan the qr code on the screen and start playing clash royale However, things have actually been heating up since we left, and as you may know, we actually returned on two pretty big occasions. So, only a few years after our departure, the Burning Legion launched a pretty significant invasion of Azeroth, but Pandaria especially, and this wasn't just some local threat. The Peak of Serenity was actually destroyed, really, the main sanctuary of the monks, and as far as we know, it is still fully destroyed since the monks actually had to move to the Wandering Isles as a new order hall. With the defeat of the Burning Legion, it is likely that there might have been some rebuilding efforts, but as far as we know, nothing was actually officially confirmed. The Shadow Pan have actually been active all this time. They followed us in small numbers to alternate Draenor, we have seen them training monks in Legion, and in BFA, they had actually infiltrated the Mogu that arrived from Pandaria. Naturally, this brings us to the Mogu and the Zandalari, and what actually happened with these guys. So, as we know, the Zandalari combined with the Mogu and Revived Lation launched a significant offensive back in MOP, and we know with 100% certainty that this failed and failed miserably. The Zandalari were completely wrecked and they lost a significant amount of resources, which really led to events in BFA and the Mogu were and still are in an even worse shape. They were significantly destroyed, split into groups and really any chance of hegemony is all but a dream if it is even a dream. However, Mob wasn't the end as in BFA, Mogu wanted to get Azerite to restart their adventure and that failed once again. Uh, Mogu tribe also attacked the Zandalari and supported the evil faction and the coup. They also managed to overtake the Kunlai summit for a short period of time and there were some necromancer Mogu that are still kind of mysterious up to this day. However, all of their plans were ultimately spoiled. Interestingly enough though, this was not the end. This leads us into the most important event and our major return to Pandaria. So, as you may know, Nazoth was freed by the end of BFA and we had a significant amount of content in Pandaria. There was a big assault on the Whale of Eternal Blossoms and at this time some of the Mogu actually fought on our side. They weren't the bad guys. As you may know, the Mogu were actually Titan Forged, much like the Earthen and Ra Den, who was a Titan Keeper just like Tyr and Odin for example, managed to return and reform the Titan faction known as the Rajani. They launched a significant effort to stop the invasion of Nazar, but it is really important to keep in mind that Ra didn't really believe we stood a chance and he said even back then when the titans attacked the black empire thousands and thousands of years ago it was a hard fight but now when everyone is all over the place it is nearly an impossible one at the time this seemed stupid because we just like <laughs> laser beam Nazoth and we won easily but maybe he was right as Nazoth possibly returns once again but i'll get to that in a bit so ra sacrificed himself entered nilota ultimately was corrupted by the old gods which meant we needed to put an end to him so pandaria no longer has a titan 
Peacekeeper and the Titan presence is just really gone over the entire continent. What is really interesting though is that the main enemies of this entire battle were the Manted and I feel like they're going to be relevant in the very near future. So as we know, they are actually old god minions. They would be like the Black Empire civilization, but they were sort of half neutral back in MOP. Apparently, when Yashiraj was ripped out, his heart fell out in Pandaria that we had seen Garrosh had used and his essence created the Shah. The Shah had a really minor presence since MOP. However, the Manted are ultimately blindly loyal to the old gods and whenever they return, these guys just follow them. That is exactly what happened when Garrosh took the heart of Yashiraj and now when Azot returned, of course, the exact same thing happened. They just followed. Back in MOP, their Empress Shag Zir was defeated as she was overtaken by the Shah of Fear and a very similarly named new Empress was elected, Shag Zara, which you could very easily mistake for Shag Zir, who we managed to defeat in this entire new attack and we know she had been ruling the Mantid for a few years. Now, since then, the old gods were temporarily driven away and this entire thing subsided. As far as we know, most of the Bill of Eternal Blossoms was restored and since at least five or six years had passed at this point with the time skip, it should look better if if not just brand new with a few scars. However, the Manted are still a major threat. They are sort of cult, but they no doubt remain. For example, in BFA, we know that the massive old the serpent spine was damaged and a part was overtaken by old god forces. We don't have official confirmation, but I'm guessing this has obviously been repaired as a hole in this wall is like having a hole in a dam. It is only a matter of time before it bursts. So that might have really been a priority to fix this wall. However, what I think is very interesting is that recently in Dragonflight, we got a new Nazot hint and it is very likely that this guy is still active and alive. Even more interestingly, there are also hints of other parts of Yashiraj possibly existing. I mean, just think about it. He was ripped out somewhere around the middle of Azeroth where the Well of Eternity was. His remains fell in Pandaria. Heart was also found there, which was then kept as a secret by the Titan Keepers. However, how is that remains only fell in Pandaria? It is very likely that other parts exist somewhere that we don't yet know about. There are heavy hints that the old gods are returning and for Pandaria, you know what that actually means. The Manted Awaken. If we get a new Black Empire situation, you can bet that the Manted are going to pose a significant threat to the safety of the entirety of Pandaria. And if they actually get old god powers, I really don't think the Serpent's spine is going to hold. We could also possibly find Manted searching for other parts of Yasharaj that may be hidden so they can empower themselves. Now, other than all this old god talk, we have a few more hints that we had gathered over the years. For example, with the recent time skip in Dragonflight, it was confirmed that Lily has aged and she will be relevant in the current expansion more than likely, which means that we will learn a bit more about the continent itself and Shen. Furthermore, the Timeless Isles could also be a thing that is important with all the recent talk about the Bronze Dragon fight, Nazdormu, Murazon, and also all those Pandaria Serpent Dragons could also be a thing because we don't really know their lore yet. We recently learned about the Dragon Isles, how the dragons were created. Maybe there will be some sort of a storyline. The Valley of Four Winds has likely had a cultural boom with a lot of gastro enthusiasts visiting from all over Azeroth with the Stormstar Brewery. It is very likely the center as well and a pretty important attraction in the entirety of Pandaria. Furthermore, with the defeat of Leishan, the Isle of Thunder is calm, but let's not kid ourselves, it is still without a doubt a really dangerous place. With all those dinosaurs and monsters all over the place, it is likely many researchers are now discovering it and that it is safer since there is no invasion force, but it is definitely not a place you would want to inhabit. Furthermore, we can see the Pandaria in an island expedition in BFA, the so-called Snow Blossom Village, and there were actually Mogu and the Manta over there, so it wasn't exactly a safe place. While both of these forces were weakened, they no doubt still pose a threat. So, all in all, Pandaria has been largely rebuilt. It took quite a bit of damage since MOP from both the Legion and the Old God forces, but with the recent buildup of the Black Empire storyline, a return to Pandaria actually does seem likely, and we could totally see a lot of those old storylines being picked up once again. Thank you for watching, check out what is the actual origin of the by clicking on the screen and check out the Academy for videos of real world history. See you next time.